Hi guys, so an article that appeared in the Mail on Sunday has caused a bit of a stir. The title reads, Let's unite with the EU to crush the curse of border bureaucracy. So before we go into the article itself, and I'll leave a link in the description so you can read it yourself, there are a few issues that need to be clarified regarding the Mail on Sunday itself. The paper is pro-conservative, so as the official stance of the Tory party in the run-up to the Brexit referendum was to remain in the European Union, this of course changed following the vote where we saw people like Liz Truss, who apparently were extremely critical of leaving the EU, then jump on board the Brexit bus. Anyway, the Mail on Sunday was edited at the time by Georgie Gregg, who it seems supported remaining in the European Union. And while Theresa May was Prime Minister, the paper generally supported the steps that she was taking in regards to Brexit. That all changed when Ted Verity took over in late 2018. He supported Brexit and the paper's stance shifted to a more Eurosceptic leaning. So while Brexiteers will claim that the Mail on Sunday is a Remainers newspaper, yes it was, or more precisely, it supported the Tory stance on Brexit and still does. The Tories changed. Anyway, to the article. It of course is loosely based on logic and rational thinking and blames the EU for the problems caused by Britain deciding to become a third country. It says that bureaucratic rigidity is threatening both Britain and the EU itself and that the Brexit red tape that people voted to impose apparently is completely unnecessary. This of course was written by a Brexiteer or on behalf of a Brexiteer who doesn't understand what they voted for. They voted to turn Great Britain into a third country, but they don't like the consequences of being a third country. The article attempts to use the voice of concern as a tool to convince the public that both the EU and the UK need to get rid of this Brexit red tape. They use the chairman of Marks and Spencer's Archie Norman, who describes the dire consequences to both sides if both sides don't resolve the impending issues arising from border inspection arrangements. The article then blames obsolete rules drawn up 25 years ago and how paper systems by the EU is making it more difficult to complete checks. This however is not completely true. The EU has computer systems in place along with paper ones, but the problem on the UK side is either that they don't want to align with the EU systems in order to improve the process or that the systems the UK has in place haven't been fully tested as they've only been up and running for a few months. In some cases, it seems that some of the software isn't even available yet on the UK side. But the Mail on Sunday blames the EU for this. Archie Norman, who's a former Tory MP, told the Mail on Sunday that Marks and Spencer's lorries now have to complete 700 pages of documentation to pass through EU customs controls since Brexit. The article doesn't say, but if we take France, for example, Marks and Spencer has about 20 outlets there. So it will no doubt also be a problem shipping goods to stores in Ireland and the rest of the EU. Not in the article, of course, but back in 2016, Marks and & Spencer and other major outlets voiced concern, not explicitly telling people how to vote, but expressed concern with what would happen to trade and more importantly to them and their businesses post-Brexit. The article describes checks on food as folly, saying checks on fresh items undermines their freshness. Once again, a complete lack of understanding of what Brexit actually meant. The Mail on Sunday then pulls out the typical response to this, saying that UK standards are one of the best in the world and that it was aligned with EU ones for decades. Again, not understanding that by becoming a third country, that has ended. The single market is more important to the EU than any third country's complaints about delays. The article then says, without evidence, that things are going badly in Northern Ireland. However, we've seen over the last number of weeks that Northern Ireland supermarket shelves are not empty and there isn't a shortage of heavy goods vehicle drivers. This is thanks to the Northern Ireland Protocol, which allows Northern Ireland greater access to the EU via the Republic of Ireland. Next, the article engages in attacks on so-called posturing by Brussels and its attempts to harm Britain, completely failing to understand that most of the problems were predicted by those who understood Brexit was a mistake both in the EU and the UK. Finally, the article provides a solution. It arrogantly instructs the EU to modernise, get rid of the paper and shift to an electronic system. Even if this was true, it speaks to levels of Brexiteer exceptionalism that is difficult to fathom. The article can be summed up as so. We voted to impose checks upon ourselves, 
We now don't like those checks. We blame you for the checks. We want you to get rid of the checks. We don't understand that we have zero influence on you anymore. We demand that you get rid of the checks. As I've said before, the Mail on Sunday supported Remain, but that was because it was towing the Tory line. Now it is a Brexiteer newspaper, and it will, like the Daily Mail or the Express, trumpet Brexit while at the very same time blame the EU for the consequences of Brexit. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?